Hey, hey, party people. So this is step four of four of male fashion figure croquis building. The final step to drawing your very own personal hot dude. If you have not watched steps one to three, go watch those because none of this is going to make sense unless you are familiar with my croquis building steps. Link is below in the info box. Just as a recap, step one is tracing the gesture, step two, building the body, step three, adding anatomy, and step four, we are photoshopping with pencil. No, we are not literally putting in Photoshop and doing that. No, we're gonna take our pencils and we're gonna edit. We're gonna finesse. We're going to correct any mistakes we made. We are going to figure out our customer and change the body and face and hair to suit our customer. And uh, we're going to add all the details so that it is a absolutely 100% complete template. I have my step three here. I have a piece of tracing paper on top. I have my visual scrap and I have some color pencils for correction when correcting figures. I like to flip the figure over and so I'm looking at it, I'm looking at the reverse. Sometimes when you're looking at the same thing over and over constantly, your eyes start kind of glazing over the mistakes. They don't really pop out. You're so used to looking at things a certain way that you just think that that's normal. When you flip them over then it looks like a brand new figure to you. And so inconsistencies, asymmetries, they kind of pop out. So the first thing I do is I flip the figure over and I work on uh, correcting the figure. For example, his pecs are a little bit uneven. This one is a little bit too big. And this arm is so much skinnier for some reason, even though it's the, it's the side view, and so technically it should be bigger than this one. So we're gonna bring this peck in. We're going to make this bicep bigger. I'm going to round his deltoids more. Right now they look super square, and I wanna make them a little bit rounder, and then this arm is gonna be bigger, and then I'm gonna shrink this arm just a hair. His traps are not symmetrical. Like this one is nice and rounded, so he looks beefy. So I'm gonna add a little bit more to this side. Now notice as I'm making corrections, like a little more means like a 16th of an inch, a 32nd of an inch, like just outside the original pencil line. When your figure is only 12 inches tall, then you don't want to make giant eighth of an inch, quarter of an inch corrections. I like his thighs just fine, but I do want to make his calves slimmer. And I'm gonna smooth this little bulge there, come out at the knee a little more, and then bring in the calf some. And then his foot looks a little bit weird. That's where his big foot, uh, big toe would be. I wanna make sure this is kind of prominent, so I'm gonna just pull that out a little bit more. Now, the second thing I wanna do is make corrections so that his body type is really the body type of my customer. Now, usually I would do all of this in one step with one color pencil, but I'm gonna do it in two steps just so you guys can see what I'm doing. Now with this guy, I don't know if you recall, but I wanted him to be really muscular. I wanted him to be like a real beautiful V with broad shoulders and really narrow hips. That's the kind of guy I wanted for this design project. And so I'm going to broaden his shoulders some and bring his hips in a little bit to really emphasize that look I want. And yeah, I'm gonna again, bring this out a hair. Never have your deltoids go above the clavicle, okay? Your muscles just don't 
bulge up like that, they'll bulge out. There's his tricep. And then I'm gonna define his form a little better. I'm gonna keep that. And then also, I'm gonna bring this in. And then I'm going to make his hips more narrow. And I'm gonna keep the rest of his thighs the same. I want his thighs to remain looking really muscular. So there are all my corrections. Now we're going to flip it back over. We're going to redraw the figure with all the corrections. We're going to complete the figure with faces and hair, hands and feet. And the reason why your step four has to be completely complete. Did I just say completely complete? Oh my God. I'm gonna go read a thesaurus over the weekend. I'll be right back. Mm. You want your croquis template to be as complete as possible for several reasons. Number one, as you're working, like, you know, throwing your marker paper or your ditto paper on top to work on your croquis, you want to be tracing the body and then focusing all of your brain space on cool designs, like how to drape cool folds and how to get that suit looking just right. And not, oh, how do I draw hands again? Uh, like, where was his nose supposed to, is that too long? Like, you don't want to think about those things. You want to think about, how wide am I making lapels this season? Are we feeling like really wide 70s collars right now? No, we're not, by the way. We're totally not. Secondly, even if you are not tracing all the parts every time you do a design croquis, it really helps for you to consistently be looking at the model who looks like your customer so that you are reminding yourself to be designing for your customer. Okay, sometimes, you know, you see something cool or you think of something cool and you're like, oh, I want that, I'm gonna do that, but it's not really in line with your customer, but you're trying to force it and you look, you know, you draw your croquis according to the kind of customer you want. You know, you're broad-shouldered, all-American, athletic, hot, wholesome, smiley guy. And if the design doesn't work for your customer, it's going to look awkward as you're using your croquis template to design and draw it. And so you'll know that that is not falling within your design project, whether it's direction given to you by your creative director, your teacher, or direction you gave yourself. I'm gonna use a 0.7 to be pencil because I want my lines to be pretty dark and thick because I'm going to either pop this in the Xerox machine and make copies so that I'm using, you know, this stuff is pretty flimsy. So I wanna use ditto paper as my template or I'm gonna throw it in the scanner. And so I want the drawing to get picked up. Here's my Roger, my newly beautiful symmetrical trap, straight clavicle, my rounded deltoid, beautifully carved tricep, peck, peck, peck. Nipples. No, I don't know why men have nipples. Go Google it. When I do abs, if I'm painting somebody shirtless and I do abs, I don't draw individual abs. Notice that the pecs are far more defined than the abs, and these abs are defined plenty. I would paint these shadows of the abs, but I wouldn't draw them, but I will mark the basic placement of them for my reference.
This is pretty much the part of the demo where my students are just watching me draw and they're like, oh, Zoe, you make it look so easy. Mm. I am not made of magic. I am made of practice. That is my classroom motto. That is my video series mo uh, motto. That is my life motto. Now I'm gonna draw his face and hair and I have a whole hair series going on. We're about four videos in, so check that out. I'm gonna drop the link in the info box. I will be doing a face series very soon and I will include both male and female faces in that. So here's your step four, your complete walking figure of your broad-shouldered, muscular dude. Ta-da! Let's do another one. Here's our other dude, our skinny, standing, three-quarter view guy. And, you know, the other guy was super muscular. Let's do a really skinny guy. Um, those are the two kind of like basic categories for menswear, right? We have like our buff dude and our skinnier dude. Kind of like thin tone, think like Joseph Gordon Levitt. Again, I have taken my step three, put a piece of tracing paper on top. I'm gonna flip them over. I've got my color pencil. And this guy, he's plenty thin, but I really wanna make his legs much thinner. Like his legs are very muscular, but I just wanna like make him like really lean all over. So I'm gonna bring this in. I'm gonna, I'm gonna keep his butt actually. <laughs> and we're gonna, Keep the muscle shapes, right? Just because the muscles are flatter doesn't mean the shape becomes different. And I'm not going to uh, make his knees look much smaller because you need your knees to be a certain width to like hold up your body weight and look structurally sound. And this calf is pretty thin, so just leave it like that. And then this one. And you know, I know that this arm is foreshortened, but for some reason it just looks really short to me. So I'm just gonna pull it back a hair. And then his neck looks kind of stiff, straight up and down. And his head looks a little bit big for his body. So I'm going to move his face forward. And so you have like a nicer, more natural angle, forward angle to the neck. And then I'm going to just make his head a tiny bit smaller. And then I'm going to put in the basic spacing for his sunglasses. Softly curving, but a flat plane across his face. That's the handle. And notice, you know, there's a space for an extra eyeglass lens right there. So you want to make sure you also have that space right in there. All right, let's put it together. Yeah, I like to kind of lift up and take a look at it by itself. Make sure things are looking good. A lot of purists, they like the idea of being able to draw any direction beautifully and that's cool. You know, I'm not really an illustrator by trade. I'm a designer who's very good at illustrating. And so I move the paper around so that I'm not drawing at weird angles. And I'm drawing at the comfortable angle for my arm that produces the best work for me. So I move my paper around and 
You know, if you're someone who prides themselves on keeping their drawing like perfectly upright, that's cool. That's you do you, yo. Wait, one, two, three, four. Huh. Yes, those days when you have to count the fingers you're drawing. <laughs> Don't forget your bulge. When you design pants, you got to design and fit around a man's bulge. So don't forget to draw it on your croquis. And his hand will go in his back pocket. And there is our toned slender guy ready for his skinny suit with his skinny tie and a cool little, that's still hip now, right? Uh, the little tie bar. Right? I love those. Love a little gorgeous tie bar. So here you have it. Your step fours for your two guys. Your beefcake wholesome guy. The slick back pompadour and a confident stride. And then you have your kind of too cool for school on the phone or adjusting his glasses skinny guy. Questions? Give me all the questions, drop them in the info box. Hit the subscribe button if you want an alert for my future videos, especially my face series that I'm gonna be starting really soon. You know, like all my social media because I'm awesome and you should just like look at all the awesome stuff I post all the time. Okay, I don't actually post that often. Yeah, I post, but you know, it's not gonna be ridiculous. Practice, like I said before, I'm not made of magic, I'm made of practice. So go and practice and I will see you next time.